Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Ben, and welcome to this Godot shaders tutorial for absolute beginners. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of shaders in Godot. Actually, just the very basics of a, of a fragment shader. So we're going to have a new project here in Godot and drag over our Godot icon here. And I'm just going to set the transform to zero, zero. In order to apply a shader, uh, you're going to need some sort of canvas item. In this case, I'm going to use a sprite that we can apply our shader to. Now we'll save this scene as icon. Come over here to the right and we'll come to the material. We'll do a new shader material. And then from here, we'll do a new, well, we need to click on it actually. And then from here, we'll do a new shader. And it can be called icon GD shader, that's fine. That's what Godot wants to call it. And we can open up this script by double clicking on it, this shader script, and that opens up this little shader window. Now Godot's shaders will automatically update to reflect what is going on. So we can easily see how our shader is working right here in the editor. You can see right away we have the shader type. This is a canvas item shader. There's different types of shaders for lighting and such, but this is the one that we'll use for our sprite here. And there's this one function inside of our shader called fragment. And what this does, if you imagine in our shader here, every single pixel on this texture can be modified inside of this fragment function. So when the shader is run, what happens is the shader code, the shader program runs through each individual pixel of our image and applies this code to that pixel. And that allows us to do a lot of fancy things. Uh, so first, let's get the color of the current pixel. Well, let's just output a color. So what we'll do is we'll say color. And this is the output of this function. We'll set it equal to vec or, and then we'll just do one, 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 and one for our color, and then put a semicolon at the end. So Godot's shader language is uh, a little bit more strict than GD script. So we've got to have the semicolon here. And what this does is it just says for every single pixel, output white. And you can see it's updated and now our shader is just completely white right here. Um, but if we were to comment this out like this, then it would go back to what it was before. Now let's say we wanted to make a shader for a character that flashed white. That's a pretty common uh, problem in game development. We could, uh, we would want our shader to um, output white, but we wouldn't want it to always be fully visible. We'd want to adjust the transparency based on the transparency of the sprite. You can see here in the corner, if we apply our shader here in the corner, it doesn't account for that transparency. It just makes the whole thing white. So what we need to be able to do is get the color of the pixel that we're on. And we can do that like this. We can say vec or input color, and we'll set this equal to texture texture uppercase, all like that, and UV. And so what that does is it, it grabs the color from this texture right here at this position of the texture. So the UV is like an XY coordinate position. And so that gives us the input color for each individual pixel, right? And then we can put a semicolon at the end here. And once we have our input color, um, you could make a shader that just output that input color. So it just gets the input and then it outputs it, right? And we end up with the exact same sprite we had to begin with because we're just going through every single pixel. We're getting the color of that pixel and then we're outputting that same color back out. Okay, that makes sense, hopefully. Now what we can do is we can take our white color here and instead of doing an alpha value of one, we can actually get the alpha value of our input color. So in order to do that, we can pass in input color dot a for alpha. 
Now what happens is it outputs white, but it takes into account the alpha value of whatever the pixels were existing. And now we've made ourselves a shader that flashes white. We could mess with this shader a little bit more. Say we wanted to output some sort of, kind of like a monochrome color. We could pass in the red value, so input color dot red um, into our output, and now we're getting um, what we're getting is a maxed out blue value, a maxed out green value, and then uh, not very much red because our, our our Godot logo doesn't actually have a lot of red in it, right? Um, there's very little red in this logo here. It's mostly blues and greens. And so that's why when that's why when we do this, we don't get very much information here. Uh, we do get the face though. We could take, so we've got our red, green, blue values, right? We could take our green value and put color dot green. And now we're maxing out the blue value, but we're passing in the red and the green value. And this kind of gives us a monochrome tone here. And we could we could do the opposite. So we could output our red, green, blue, and say we want our red color back. We can max out our red at 1.0 and um, leave the green and the blue values at what they actually are. And we get kind of this reddish tone. So you can already see we're able to manipulate the values of each individual pixel just by changing the output color um, and using our input color as uh, as some sort of a, rep, a starting point or a reference. And a lot of the time, that's what shaders do. So what they'll do is they'll they'll get the color that was there before, they'll perform some operations on that color, manipulate it in some way, and then they'll spit back out an output color. Let's try to apply this with a very basic black and white color. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our input vectors, our, our input here, which is our input color red, green, and blue, and we're going to output an average of those colors. So we'll say um, float color average equals input color dot red plus input color dot green plus input color dot blue and then we'll divide them all by three and we'll need to use 3.0 here we can't just use the number three because Godot is a little bit more strict then for all of these we can just pass in our color average like this okay so we're taking the average of all of the colors and then we're passing it in to our output color. And we've made a very simple black and white shader. Now this method for getting um, black and white is not 100% accurate. And part of that is because um, blue, for example, tends to be a lot darker. And so this doesn't really account for the different values of red, green, and blue, how they each have different values. But this is a very good starting point. And again, you can see how we can very quickly perform some operations on a basic on the input color that we get and then spit out a new output color and create some sort of shader using that. Lastly, I wanna put a simple control statement in here um, to show that you can do that. So what we'll do is we'll create an output color here. So we'll say vec for output, output color and we'll set this equal to this value that we were doing before. And then we'll just do output color here. Output color. And it's going to be exactly the same as it was before, right? But now what we're going to do is a simple if statement. So we'll say if output color dot, let's see, if output color dot red is greater than uh, point, 0.8. And output color dot green, red, green, red, green, blue. I, I forget the order. Let's see. Is greater than 0 0.8. And output color 
dot blue is greater than 0 0.8. I'm going to put parentheses around this because I think you have to. And then we also need brackets. Again, this is different from GDScript, so keep that in mind as you're writing your shader. Then we can say output color dot alpha equals 0, 0.0. So the ranges on our colors are going to be from, one, from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. 1.0 being the maximum range, right? We'll put it... Um, I'm going to wait to put the semicolon here because I want you to try and guess what this code is going to do. We're going to get an output color that's going to be gray, right? It's going to be black and white. And then we're going to do a check. Or we're going to check the values of our colors. And once that check is done, we're going to alter the output color if those values are all greater than a certain amount. So try and guess what is going to happen when I actually apply this semicolon. And if you can't figure it out, that's okay, but it's good to just try and then see how close you were. Okay, so we're gonna do it now. We'll put the semicolon here. And that is very strange. So what happened is uh, our, our code here, what it does is it checks to see if our color is greater, if our color, the red, green, and blue values on our color are greater than 0.8. And if they are, it makes the color transparent. And remember, this is being applied to each individual pixel. So when we make it transparent, when we set the alpha to zero here, it's only on the pixel where the colors are all greater than 0 0.8, which means white, essentially. So what we've done is we've made our white values inside of this image transparent. We could also do something like just make them red. So we could say output color equals, and then we'll just do vec4 uh, 1.0, 0 0.0, 0, 0.0, 0 .0 and 1.0. And this is red, right? It's maxed in the red value. So we changed all of the white values to red and we could adjust this these parameters here to make it more lenient so we could do seven right instead of uh eight and that allows us to grab more of those lighter values and there we go i mean that's that's the very basics of shaders i'm not going to go into it anymore but i was i had a student ask about shaders and how shaders work inside of godot and I couldn't actually find, they, they wanted me to recommend a video. I couldn't actually find a basic video that showed uh, something like this, like the very basics of using the fragment function inside of a canvas item shader and explaining that out. So I thought I'd make one. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching it. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video.